Let's take a look how we can generate um, geometry for our structural analysis in a CAD program. In this case, it's SketchUp, but you could use any. And then prepare it for analysis. Now, in this case, we have some kind of a shell here in SketchUp. Nothing too fancy. But um, what is really important is that your uh, structure is set up in the CAD environment the same way that you want to analyze it later because you have to be aware of what you're pulling in. If you uh, want to do this as a mesh of single members, basically, all of these diagonals and, and individual pieces here would be single members, then, then this is a good way to set it up. Um, if you want curved members, like an arch, if there were only an arch here, then uh, you cannot analyze an arch in visual analysis. It has to be segmented and uh, it will be approximated. Now the nice thing with using SketchUp is that curves are always segmented and so for that matter if you pick a proper division for those curves then um, you can use SketchUp very much for preparing a structure like this. The other thing is of course any kind of diagonals and paneling and so on uh, should be done beforehand because uh, we, we really want to um, move this over into visual analysis um, from from our CAD software because we can't easily pick these points in, in, in visual analysis. All right, so what you need to do here is, of course, um, export this to a format that you can pull in. The format is DXF, um, the old AutoCAD format. Uh, usually any 3D modeling software will be able to export something like this here. Uh, what's important is that the edges get exported and sometimes faces uh, can also be used, but but not from SketchUp. It'll it'll only use edges. Okay, so um, the where are we here uh, in in SketchUp? The the way that you can do this is through uh, export 3D model. If you have the professional version of SketchUp, then there will be the option to export to DXF. If you don't have the professional version of SketchUp, you'll need to get a plugin, a DXF exporter plugin, and then use that to export everything to a DXF file. Now let's take a look how that comes into visual analysis. So here's an empty um, window, a new file for visual analysis. Um, you can pull this in by going to File, Import, DXF file. Now with the student version, this is most probably grayed out, but you can always go into the classroom and um, import using uh, using the version that's there, and then save it and open it up in your um, student version. The only uh, limitation is member um, number number of members. You might run into a problem if you have too many, but it'll tell you and you can adjust at that point. So I'm going to say import DXF file. I'm going to go to my desktop, and here it is. OK, <clears throat> so then it tells you what it found. So there are a bunch of lines. There are some polylines. There are some arcs. I'm just going to leave everything on um, the way it is. You can actually already go ahead and say, OK, every single one of these members, um, you want to assign a certain database shape. So you can pre-select at this point what it's supposed to be. but you can also do that later. Um, then the dimensions is an important one, whether it comes in as feet or inches. SketchUp usually um, bases everything in inches, but other CAD software uh, might be in feet. If you have crooked numbers, you can multiply any of those. Typically, what you need to do is swap Y and Z, because otherwise the entire thing comes on sideways. And uh, everything else we can just leave like this. If you had exported from a um, AutoCAD, for example, then um, this importer will divide up the arc and circle. But for SketchUp, we don't have to do that. Okay, now everything's in. We can take a look what we got here. So this looks pretty good. Going to move around. So you see, for the most part, it worked. Um, 
all of these members came in really nicely all the diagonals are there apparently it messed up something on this last end here all you need to do there is select delete and then you might need to fix things because now my ends are not connected so what you need to do is there uh, draw your members and fix that I'm going to uh, fast forward through that okay so at this point all of these guys are connected and my mesh is nicely imported as single members now you can always check the picture view for what you got now in this case you see already this is way over dimensioned so I can go ahead highlight everything Oops. modify members pick a better database shape I'm actually gonna go with a round tube maybe something like a four inch diameter tube there we go and then let's check that out again oh it's a little better still a little on the over dimension side but nevertheless now next thing that we need is of course restraints and loads and the way you can do that easily is if you go to one of the views like front or back then you can highlight all the bottom nodes really easily using a window selection so you hold the shift key and you go like that and then up here you need to make sure that it says nodes now when you look in 3d you see you've selected the front and the back and now for our purpose here i'm going to assign a pinned restraint to all of those nodes and this is how it looks like right there so now at this point our model is actually pretty good we can check it we can analyze it and go right from there you see the deflected shape right here 